In today's video, we're following in the footsteps of children's author Enid Blyton, and we're off to explore the Enid Blyton Trail in Dorset, and hopefully have a smashing time. So with our map in hand, it's time to catch robbers, smugglers and kidnappers, and hopefully learn a little bit about Enid along the way. If you don't know us, I'm Rachel, he's Wills, and we are Postcard and a Pint. So grab your egg sandwiches and lashings of ginger beer, and let's get started. Oh, and do be a brick and like this video and subscribe to the channel if you'd be so kind. Thanks awfully! We're starting with number three, Corfe Castle, and what a beautiful castle it is. This castle was built in the 11th century by William the Conqueror, and it stands proudly looking out over the Purbeck Hills. But what did this castle mean to Enid, and how did it feature in her stories? Enid Blyton used to visit Corfe Castle regularly. She'd come in on the steam train from Swanage. It's this castle in her mind that became Kirin Castle on Kirin Island. Let's go take a look. So surround this castle with water, Add an abundance of rabbits for Timmy to chase, and you've got Kirin Island and Kirin Castle. Kirin Castle features in so many of the famous five books, and is described like this. It had been built of big white stones, broken archways, tumble-down towers, ruined walls. That was all that was left of a once beautiful castle, proud and strong. It looks awfully mysterious, said Julian, and it is. Right on cue, the steam train arrived from Swanage. What does a modern-day dick think of this? To actually be at the place where Kirin Castle was, was based on, it's a bit mind-blowing, really. It really is. It's a bit bigger than I thought it was, and the bricks are a bit squarer than I thought they were compared to the old Welsh ones, but it's very cool, isn't it? It really is, and this was just the first stop on our Enid Blyton trail. We didn't catch any smugglers or foil a kidnapping plot, but we were so glad that we'd run away together to have this adventure. What's next, Rach? Corf Castle tick. Next, it's the Isle of Purbeck Golf Club. Back to the map, and it's number seven. This was just a seven minute drive away and gave us beautiful views across to Poole. Anyone can visit the clubhouse here, but what did this golf club have to do with Enid Blyton? In 1951, Enid's husband, Kenneth Darrell Waters, purchased this golf club. She would sit here looking out over Brownsea Island writing. Enid also played golf and was lady captain here in 1951. Check out her married name, Mrs E. Darrell Waters. Interestingly, the main character in her Mallory Towers School series is Darrell Rivers, a name inspired by her own married name. So much of this golf club still feels like it's relaxing in the past, and who can blame it with views like this? If you do play golf, this nine-hole course is said to be one of the most scenic in England. This course and its staff also inspired a famous five story. Gordon Johnny James was the club's greenkeeper and sometimes Enid's caddy. Now in the book Five Have a Mystery to Solve, there's a character called Lucas who works on a golf club and Enid based this character on Gordon Johnny James. And the views across to Brownsea Island gave her Whispering Island. But more on that later, because next we're off to Studland. Back onto the map and number eight is Studland, just a four minute drive away. Enid would often stay at the Knoll House Hotel and would walk into Studland and down to the beach on her visits. Studland Beach didn't feature in any of the famous five stories, although quite what the famous five would have made of the now nudist beach just along this coastline would be interesting. Get an eyeful of that with your corned beef sandwiches. So who and what did this place inspire? Rach, Enid's character Mr Plod is based on the Studland village policeman of that time, PC Christopher Roan. And Christopher PC Roan will surely rank as the world's most famous police officer, thanks to the Noddy stories. Let's leave Studland Beach and this little Timmy the dog behind and head to the Knoll House Hotel. This is Knoll House Hotel and Enid used to stay here back in the 60s. What a beautiful view. Yes, when Enid's husband owned the golf club, the couple would regularly stay here. They would stay for several weeks each spring, summer and autumn across the 1950s and 60s, always in room 40 with its views across the bay. There is loads of Ina Blyton memorabilia here, from the displays showcasing her books to letters that she wrote and received while staying here. This is a must visit for any Enid Blyton fan. And from Enid's table in the dining room, table three, she would look out over old Harry Rocks in the distance probably imagining smugglers engaging in dastardly deeds, soon to be thwarted by four children and a dog. Thank you so much for your stories, Enid Blyton. Back on the map, and it's number one, Swanage. And after a 12-minute drive, we were there. 
I think the spirit of Enid was smiling down on us this day as it was unseasonably warm and sunny and we were seeing Enid's Dorset as she would have wanted it seen. We're now on Swanage Pier. Back in Enid's day, there used to be two piers and Enid and Kenneth stayed in a number of hotels, one of which was the Grosvenor Hotel, which would have been right behind me as now modern apartments. And before supper every night, Kenneth and Enid would swim around both piers. That sounds very chilly indeed. To honour Enid, we ate our picnic on this pier. And it was delicious. Another place Enid would stay was the Ship Hotel, now the Ship Inn. We didn't pop in for a pint today though, Today was a ginger beer kind of day. Swanage is a lively seaside town, and on Institute Road once stood Hill and Churchill's bookshop. Here, Enid would sign copies of her work. Now it's a Morrison's general store selling toilet rolls for a pound. How times change. We walked in Enid's footsteps up to Swanage train station, where many of her day trips into the countryside would have begun. We're now on Swanage station, where Enid used to catch the train to Corfe Castle. But you already know that, because we've been there. Enid would board a steam train and travel in style up to Corfe Castle. Ah, those were the days. Just imagine looking out of the train window through clouds of steam and seeing this. It's magical, but I think it's time to get back to the map. Next, we're off to number two, Kimmeridge Bay, and this was about a 30 minute drive from Swanage. The sun was about to set and... We're in Kimmeridge Bay. This one featured in Five Fall Into Adventure, but more importantly, it's one of the best places in Dorset for rock pooling. You'll also find the remains of some World War II pillboxes on this beach. These once sat up on the cliffs, but thanks to erosion, they're now on the beach. But if there are fossils about, then we need to find some. Any luck with those fossils, kids? Lovely, well done. Standing above this beach is the Clavel Tower. In the book Five Fall Into Adventure, this is Red's place, Red Tower, and where George is taken when she's kidnapped. It's not how I imagined it at all, but that's the beauty of reading. Wills and I really enjoyed describing how we'd pictured all of the things we were seeing on this trail in our minds as children. As a kid, I loved my famous five books. I knew all of those books off by heart. To be honest, probably still do. And to be here in Dorset and visit all the places that inspired these stories and where supposedly these stories took place is just magical. Day one of the Enid Blyton Trail complete. Today we're off to number nine, Brownsea Island. The weather wasn't as Enid Blyton as yesterday, but we parked up at Pool Harbour and wandered along the front to get our ferry to Brownsea Island. It was a very chilly and windy crossing, and 20 minutes later, we were there. The island is now in the care of the National Trust and is essentially a nature reserve. Enid could see this island from the clubhouse at the golf club and she was fascinated by its history. In 1927, a lady called Mary Bonham Christie bought the island. She was a recluse by nature and immediately ordered a mass eviction of the island's residents to the mainland. After a wildfire in 1934, she then banned all public access to the island for the rest of her life. And this was Enid's inspiration for Whispering Island in Five Have a Mystery to Solve, an island where no one is supposed to go. It's great for field recording though. This island is also hailed as the birthplace of scouting. In 1907, Robert Baden-Powell held an experimental camp on the island to test out his scouting ideas. Isn't that right, Rach? 21 boys attended and took part in activities such as camping, observation, woodcraft, chivalry, life-saving and patriotism. Following the camp, Baden-Powell published his book Scouting for Boys and the scout movement grew from there. If you're planning to visit Brownsea Island, do give yourself a fair few hours to explore as there's so much to see, like the Visitors Centre and St Mary's Church. This church was built in 1834 by William Waugh, a former colonel of the British Army. He named it after his wife, Mary. Oh, she looks cross. All you'll find here today, though, is Mary the Chicken. What a lovely visit, and we'll certainly be back to explore further. But now it's time to carry on with our trail. Number six, Lulworth Cove and Stairhole. Just a 30-minute drive away from Poole. 
We did a short circular walk to take in both of these sites. Let's have some info, Rach. This is Stairhole. This was an inspiration for one of the locations in the Rubber Dub mystery. We don't know this book at all, but it's set in a seaside village with a secret whirlpool. Rubber Dub Whirlpool is where the children in the book have one of their adventures and is described as one of the finest whirlpools I ever did see. The rocks around this cove resemble an old-fashioned washboard, hence Enid Blyton's name for the place. This section of the coast is part of the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Site. It's full of blowholes, caves, arches, stacks and coves. It's beautiful. But back on the trail to number four, the Blue Pool. This is another nature reserve and well worth a visit, even if you're not following in the footsteps of Enid Blyton. It's just a short walk from where you park the car to the Blue Pool. Tell us all about this one, Rach. We're now at the Blue Pool. Now, this is said to be Enid Blyton's inspiration for Lake Meran in Five Go Off in a Caravan, when they see a circus past the bottom of their garden and decide that that's the life they want for their holiday this year. And they hire two caravans and they follow the circus to this beautiful, beautiful blue lake at the foot of some hills. I can see where she got her inspiration. This lake is described in the book as an enormous blue lake that lay glittering in the August sunshine. The lake is less blue these days, but it's still a beautiful place to visit. We enjoyed a walk in the woods, taking in views of the pool. Sadly, we missed out on the Blue Pool Tea Rooms, which are supposed to be excellent. On to our final location, number five, Stobra Heath, just a seven minute drive away. Tell us about this one, Rach. This is Stobra Heath, one of the inspirations for a location in Five Go to Mystery Moor. The five are on the moors, a mysterious fog overcomes them, and aeroplanes drop packages from the skies. We'll simply take our tents, some food, and go and camp out on the moor by some spring. What could be nicer? Oh yes, said Anne, her eyes shining. And off they went to Mystery Moor, straight into another adventure. We spent three blissful days in Dorset and discovered not only this trail, but other incredible sights along the way. Do check out our Road Trip to Dorset vlog to see what else we got up to. The Isle of Purbeck is absolutely idyllic. It makes you want to grab your bucket and spade and holiday the old-fashioned way. But now it's time to head back to our little shepherd's hut in the wood and share our thoughts on this journey. What do you say? And that's the Enid Blyton Trail. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us. We did. We absolutely loved it. On the map that we've been showing throughout, everything's labelled like one to nine. Don't necessarily do them in that order. Just see where you're based. We were based in Corfe Castle and we did them in the order that suited us. Yeah. And it was so lovely to see the inspirations. Those books, I would lock myself away in my bedroom for hours with Famous Five books. I used to love it. Age of eight, nine, Yeah, whatever. you were Secret Seven more, weren't you? Secret Seven, Famous Five, yeah. Secret Of, Mystery oh, Of, loved all of those. Absolutely lived. Don't know the rubber dub 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 no, dub no, murders me or whatever either, but We're going to check it, that one check out. Check it out. But yeah, we definitely lived in those books as kids. And I do hope kids today live in them as well. I know they're I not so. as PC these days and frowned upon by some, yeah. but... I hope kids still manage to lose themselves in so. those books. We highly recommend doing this trail. Uh, it was, I, I can't even express to say how, what, how Dorset good a time we've had. is a fantastic county. Beautiful. And as well as those, you'll see from our other videos, we've done lots more of Dorset as well. Yeah. Check those out. Definitely. So if you'd like this video, that'll be lovely. Oh yeah, if you'd hit the subscribe button, you'd do the the, the Patreon. We've got a Patreon yeah. now, the like in, the leave a comment. Did you read Famous Five, yeah. Secret Seven, any of those? Do you like Enid Blank? Do you not like Enid Blank? I can't talk today. Yeah. <laughs> ginger beer, it's not alcoholic. It's gone to your head. We've had God. lashings of ginger beer. God. We haven't had too many egg sandwiches. But... We haven't. Have we? <laughs> but we've had lashings of ginger beer. Yeah, anyway. And thank you for joining us. And as we say... In Postcard in the Pint. Cheers, Cheers to, to the, the good, good times. times. What would bears be without bees? I don't know. Ears. Oh.